Yeah. Well, it has been a wild 24 hours. Shortly after we posted our Liberty and Coastal Carolina prediction video, it was announced that Malik Willis and other players within the Liberty program had tested positive for coronavirus. As the day went on, rumors began to circulate that the game was going to be canceled and that Coastal Carolina was instead going to play BYU down in Conway, the site of College Game Day. And this morning, that rumor proved to be true. Forget Liberty Coastal Carolina. We are now getting to see BYU and Coastal Carolina. So sure, it might not have that great backstory of that old FCS Big South rivalry, but this game has the chance to be even better than the game that we were originally going to see on Saturday. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, breaking down everything you need to know for number 13 BYU and number 18 Coastal Carolina now being played at 4.30 Central Time on Saturday afternoon. So a lot of shakeups, scheduling shakeups. I mean, you've got the time shakeup, you've got the opponent shakeup. This is just the type of season that we are dealing with and the type of year that we are having to deal with. Uh, but credit to BYU and credit to Coastal Carolina for quickly finding a replacement. And BYU willing to make the long trip out from Provo all the way out to Conway to play this game. One that can certainly boost both teams' resumes here as each team is sitting at 9-0. and uh, And again, in the top 20 of the college football playoff rankings. So this is a great opportunity for both teams to get what will absolutely be their best win of the season, regardless of who wins this game. So today we're going to talk a little bit about everything, like we do uh, in our Game of the Week videos. And this, of course, is our number one in Game of the Week. Uh, we're going to touch offense, defense, storylines, and who we have winning this game by the end of it all. One thing I want to touch on before we get to that, though, is how dominant both BYU and Coastal Carolina have been. Again, each team is sitting at 9-0 and right now. Each team only has one of those nine wins decided by one possession. So eight of the nine victories for both the Cougars and the Chanticleers have been decided by more than one possession. That's extremely, extremely impressive. And it's a scary thought for both teams, I would say, going into this one, even though I'm not sure if we're going to see a double-digit victory from either team on Saturday. We enter this game, guys. BYU is a 10-point favorite on the road. So despite coming into this game with very short notice, today is Thursday. The game was announced it would be played on Thursday. They're playing the game Saturday afternoon. BYU is still a 10-point favorite on Saturday. That spread, again, brought to you by betnow.eu. Make sure to check out their link down in the description below and use our promo code GRIDIRON over there for that 100% sign-up bonus and that $1,000 cash sign-up bonus as well. So all our spreads are constantly changing. Some great plays over there. We enjoy using them. We've loved partnering with them for over the past year now, and I can promise that you will not regret doing the same. So make sure to go check out all the info down in our description. So a lot of stuff to talk about here. Let's start right now on the offense, and let's start with the Cougars, always starting with the road team. BYU, you know, they are playing their first game in two weeks. So while they are getting a short notice on this game uh, to go out to Coastal Carolina to play, they certainly will be well-rested. They certainly will be well-rested and prepared for this one. And they have one of the best offenses, I would say, in the entire country. Now, you might look at that and take it with a grain of salt because of their a lack of strength of schedule, I guess I would say, the weakness of their schedule. But still, to put up the numbers that they're putting up and to beat the teams the way they're beating them, uh, not many teams, I think, could do that. I genuinely don't. The Cougars are averaging 47.6 points per game, 535.8 total yards per game. And they are led, of course, by one of the best quarterbacks in the country right now, in Zach Wilson, who has thrown for over 2,700 yards. 26 touchdowns and just two interceptions. And let's keep in mind that on occasion, he likes to show off his mobility. He has eight rushing touchdowns on the year. The 34 total touchdowns, just two interceptions for Zach Wilson. Again, up there to me as a top five, top six quarterback in the entire country this year. You look at BYU again, you want to look at their stats a little bit closer. 333.4 passing yards per game, 
from Wilson and this Cougars offense, also led by their top wide receiver in Dax Milne, 906 yards, six touchdowns on the year. So fantastic chemistry between the wide receiver and Zach Wilson. And then you look at their running game, averaging 202.3 rushing yards per game, led by Tyler Algier, 851 yards and 11 touchdowns on the year. So your quarterback, your running back, your wide receiver, that's just your top wide receiver. There's plenty of other ones. BYU's loaded from top to bottom. And they're certainly one of the more physical teams, I would say, in the entire country because while they're so explosive offensively, they have a lot of protection up front. They win their games in the trenches as well. The offensive line for the Cougars only allowing eight sacks all year long. Nine games, eight sacks. It's pretty dang impressive. Coastal Carolina, let's touch on them. The home team, a historic moment, a historic game for them. The first time college game day has ever come to Conway, South Carolina. They're having one of the best, if not the best season in program history. Again, it was not too long ago that Coastal Carolina was a member of the Big South in the FCS. And now here they are, undefeated, 18th in the country, clenched themselves a spot in the Sun Belt Championship game, and are looking for what could arguably be the biggest win in program history. So a lot of excitement uh, and energy and passion into this fan base, into this program, and obviously surrounding this game on Saturday afternoon. The Shonda Clears are averaging 38.7 points per game. So right on up there, I would say, with the explosiveness uh, and high-octane offense that BYU also has. Like BYU, Coastal Carolina is very, very balanced. 226.3 passing yards per game, 222 rushing yards per game. So they own that slight rushing edge above BYU. When you look at the stats, uh, BYU is certainly owning the passing edge if you're just basing it off the numbers. But Coastal Carolina, what's been so impressive to me and what Jamie Chadwell did uh, early on this year was giving the reins to a freshman quarterback in Grayson McCall. I think that's a brilliant coaching decision and it obviously has paid off big time for him. Grayson McCall, 1,747 yards on the year, 20 touchdowns to go along with five rushing touchdowns, but 20 touchdowns through the air to just one interception. Freshman quarterback, you're undefeated, nine games, one interception. Again, I don't know many quarterbacks in the entire country that could pull that off. Again, say what you want about strength of schedule, quality of opponents, I do not care. That's unbelievable. So Zach Wilson and McCall both taking fantastic care of the football. This could be a game where Whichever quarterback throws the first interception, whichever quarterback finishes with the most interception, that could very well just be one. Maybe that team wins. Maybe that other team wins. So this is going to be crucial here on who takes better care of the football uh, because neither Wilson or McCall make many mistakes. And it's going to be a great sight, sight to see on Saturday. You don't want to see games with that many mistakes. You look at the rest of Coastal's team here. You, we talked about BYU and some of their top uh, some of their top players. You look at Coastal Carolina. Javon Hiley. The top wide receiver for the Chanticleers right now, 682 yards and eight touchdowns in this year alone. To some, that might not sound like a lot. But when you look at Hiley's stats from the past two years combined, Hiley already has more touchdowns this year than he had in the last two years combined. And he needs just 18 reception yards in this game on Saturday to eclipse the total reception yardage from the past two years combined as well. He had 699 reception yards, five touchdowns in his first two years, 682 yards, eight touchdowns already now in 2020. And that just shows the resurgence uh, of this passing attack from Coastal Carolina. That just shows the, the, the job that great coaching can do now from Jamie Chadwell. Uh, this Coastal team as a whole playing a lot better uh, and obviously eclipsing that talent uh, more so than we've seen in recent years. So both offenses, guys, I think that's going to be your storyline. One of the biggest storylines is the quarterback play. We mentioned with Liberty and Coastal, we expected to see Malik Willis and Grayson McCall going at it. We said it would be a battle of two great quarterbacks. That doesn't change here now between Zach Wilson and Grayson McCall. You look at the defense for BYU, that is a major, major strength for them. I Look, they're one of the more complete teams in the entire country. And again, say what you want about their schedule. Uh, but I still believe this is a top 10 team in BYU. I think they were really majorly disrespected by the College Football Playoff Committee, initially ranking them down all the way at 14th, and now they've only moved up one spot to number 13. But their defense 
is, should deserve just as much credit as their offense for the success they've had in 2020. The Cougars are allowing 13.9 points per game in just 293.3 total yards per game. Again, we always say if you are holding people on average to under 300 yards per game, that's really, really good. Really, really good. You're up there as one of the better defenses, I would say, in the country. BYU certainly is that. Contained within that 293.3 yards per game, the Cougars are allowing just 89.1 rushing yards per game. And that is the number that I want to circle the most and focus on the most here, is the fact they're allowing well under 100 rushing yards per game. Meaning, Coastal Carolina may have to rely solely on Grayson McCall and this passing attack because they might not be able to generate any success on the ground. And that could be an issue. If you make Coastal Carolina one-dimensional, you can start focusing more on the pass if you're BYU's defense. Not have to worry much about the run because you know they're not going to break off a big one. So that's something you want to keep your eye on here. BYU's run defense, one of the most stingy run defenses in the country. Can they keep it up on Saturday? And the final point I want to make with the Cougars here is we talked about how dominant they are in the trenches. They're so great up front, great protection on the offensive line. They've done a great job. Uh, really, it's getting penetration on the defensive line, tackles for losses, pressuring the quarterbacks. But the one thing BYU hasn't done as well as others is creating turnovers. Nine games, the Cougars have just 12 turnovers, have forced just 12 turnovers, seven interceptions, five forced fumbles. And while that's not bad, certainly not bad, they're certainly winning in the turnover margin, uh, that, that's going to have to change here on Saturday. You're going to have to certainly win the turnover margin, the turnover battle on Saturday against the Chanticleers. Again, a team that does not make many mistakes. And you're probably going to have to find a way to wreak havoc in the backfield and force McCall into some bad throws and maybe get some interceptions off him. Again, only one. Because if not, I think they could be in for a long day. I genuinely do. The turnovers have to improve for BYU. Coastal Carolina, how about that? Their defense, just as good as BYU's. I still give the edge to the Cougars, but they're right on up there. And that's, again, people are surprised by that. They're a Sunbelt team. Their numbers are skewed. They're not playing that great of opponents. Whatever. I don't want to hear it. Because, again, they are winning every game by more than one possession. All but one game they've won by more than one possession. Same with BYU. The defense is legit. We were talking about their front seven as being one of the best in the country months ago. So nothing has changed here. The Chanticleer is allowing 16.8 points per game, 322.2 yards per game. The key number and concern for me, though, is that the Chanticleers are allowing 140.3 rushing yards per game. 140.3 rushing yards per game. So could this be a big day for Tyler Algier? Could this be a big day for the BYU rushing attack? 140 rushing yards isn't that bad, and certainly we've seen worse numbers. But when you see how explosive this BYU team is, when you see how physical and strong they are up front on the offensive line, the ability to create lanes for their running back, the ability to create time for Zach Wilson in the pocket, could that be an issue for this Coastal Carolina team? Because this is certainly going to be the most difficult offensive line that Coastal has faced all year long. Something you want to watch out for. The one thing that Sean DeClears do well, though, and we're going to talk more on it later, is creating pressure, but also forcing turnovers. Coastal has 17 forced turnovers this year, many of those coming through the air, interceptions. So, will BYU be able to pass in this game? Will Zach Wilson be able to generate any success? Will this be another lights out performance from him? Or will this be a game where maybe he struggles a little bit? When I look at it, guys, when you look at the two defenses, this is a game really where you're going to question, can BYU pass? Because Coastal certainly does a better job of uh, against the pass, only allowing 181.9 passing yards per game. And will Coastal Carolina be able to run? As BYU has one of the best rushing defenses in the country. So can Coastal run and can BYU pass? If not, both teams may have to switch to the things that they aren't the best at or maybe isn't their first choice. I think BYU is not necessarily a run first team. They certainly like to air it out a little bit more this year with Zach Wilson. I don't necessarily think that Coastal right now has been a pass first team with Grayson McCall. They've been very dominant on the ground. So it's going to be interesting to see how each team fares against the other team's defensive strong suit. Something you want to watch out for over the course of Saturday, all day on Saturday. 
So what are some keys to this game, guys? What are the keys for both BYU and Coastal? I'm going to breeze through them real quick because of the storyline I want to touch on. I'm sure many of you, if you watched our Liberty Coastal Carolina prediction video, you know what we're talking about. BYU, real quick, keys for them are you need to get a fast start. You haven't played a game in two weeks, so that's great. You're well-rested. You're well-prepared. But this is going to be the, if I'm not mistaken, the farthest trip you have made this year when it comes to road games. You know, they've traveled down to Houston. I know that. Uh, they traveled to Boise. Uh, but for the most part, they have stayed in their little region uh, up in the western part of the country. Now they're coming all the way up to South Carolina. It's a long trip on a short notice. Not a lot of time to prep either for a top 20 team. You need to come out there and get a fast start against a Coastal Carolina team that's going to be hyped, again, for one of, if not the, biggest game in program history. Another thing BYU needs to do is stay strong with their rushing defense. You've got to be able to contain Coastal Carolina here. Make them one-dimensional. If you do, I believe BYU runs away with this game. I really do. You cannot allow Coastal Carolina to remain as balanced as they have been all year long. Coastal Carolina, what are their keys real quick? First one is, you need a pass to set up the run. We know that if you just start running it at will, you're not going to get anywhere. BYU's front seven and BYU's defensive line, they're too good for that. And we've seen that from the numbers. You throw it with Grayson McCall and you throw it effectively, you're going to be able to set up the run. You're certainly going to be able to set up the run, and maybe once you get a little bit of ground success, you can use that play action, and the run will set up the pass. You've got to be able to mix it up a little bit, and that goes back to being balanced. Another big key for Coastal here is force Zach Wilson to throw the ball. You've done such a great job in your secondary of picking off opponents, of uh, creating pressure and getting interceptions. If you can force Zach Wilson to stay in that pocket, I'm not saying he's not accurate. I think he's one of the more accurate quarterbacks in the country. But if you can take away that run game, force him to stay in the pocket, not extend the plays, maybe you're able to create enough pressure on him for him to make mistakes just to get rid of the ball because he's under pressure, or maybe you do, in fact, get a couple of interceptions. So for Zach Wilson to air it out, you need to try to make BYU one-dimensional and not let them stay as balanced as they are with such a great passing attack and a great rushing attack as well. And then our last point here, again, the battle in the trenches. We talked about it with Liberty and Coastal. We need to do the same here because I really think this is probably the toughest test up front for both teams this year. BYU's offensive line, they're going to be facing the, probably the toughest defensive line they have seen all year long. Again, BYU has allowed just eight sacks in 2020. We mentioned that earlier. Eight sacks. It's an unreal number. Coastal Carolina, they've recorded 31 sacks this year. Their front seven's unreal. Their defensive line, their pressure is ridiculous. 31 sacks all year. That includes 12 sacks in their last three games. So they're averaging four sacks per game over their last three. And I don't expect that really to slow down any. And I know that Jamie Chadwell knows that to win this game, you're going to have to force Zach Wilson into, into mistakes and get him under pressure. So they're going to be sending the pressure as much as possible. So, dominant up front. BYU's got to be able to shut that down. Coastal Carolina, on the other hand, they are just as good up front. Their offensive line's allowed 10 sacks all year. They've allowed 10 sacks. BYU's recorded 24 sacks. So again, how big are each team, is each offensive line and defensive line going to play? How physical is each one going to play? Again, the toughest test up front for each team, the toughest test all year for each team. BYU's toughest test may be being Boise State. Coastal Carolina's toughest test may be being Louisiana, both those resulting in wins for the Cougars and the Chanticleers. But the battle in the trenches is going to be key. BYU has dominated it all year long. Coastal Carolina is looking to flip that script. So what is our final prognostication, our final prediction for Saturday afternoon's game down in Conway? Again, historic matchup. You look at it. It's, it's a top 20 matchup. It's a historic one. College game day is in town in Conway for the first time ever. And this is an opportunity for both teams, like we mentioned earlier, to make a statement. Both teams feel that they've been disrespected in the college football playoff rankings Two sets of rankings have already come out, and they've both been horrible. They've been embarrassing. The committee's a laughing stock. But this is an opportunity for both to make their statement and say, we are legit. We deserve to be ranked higher. We deserve to be taken seriously. So who is going to come out with that statement win? I think it's going to be BYU. 
I think it will be the BYU Cougars coming all the way out from Provo on about two and a half days' notice. I think they get the job done. You look at BYU right now. I think they're bigger than Coastal Carolina. I think they're more physical than Coastal Carolina. And I certainly think that Kalani Satake's squad has a chip on their shoulder after getting disrespected by the committee. Many, including myself, had BYU as a top 10 team. To see them rank 14th in the initial rankings was just plain disrespectful regardless of their strength of schedule. Regardless of their strength of schedule. This is a dang good team. And quite frankly, BYU can't help their strength of schedule in a year like this. They're doing everything they can to improve it with a game against the Chanticleers. So all of that taken into account, I think BYU and their very balanced and explosive offense has just enough to come into Conway and escape with the win. But don't be mistaken. Don't misunderstand me. This is going to be a very close game. This is going to be a very close game. I think this will be the second one-possession victory for the Cougars. It's going to be a one-possession game. But in the end, it is going to be BYU that escapes with a victory, that improves to 10-0, and more than likely finishes 11-0, but will still miss out on the college football playoff. It's just simply not going to happen. But this is still a huge, monumental victory for this program and a resume-boosting program for this win as well. The dream does not die for Coastal Carolina. One loss does not derail this season. There is nothing to frown about, regardless of what happens on Saturday afternoon. They still have a Sun Belt championship to play for, one that I think they will get, and this will still go down as one of the most historic and maybe the best season in Coastal Carolina football history. But in the end, it is BYU. They go on the road, spoil college game day in Conway, and get a huge win over a top 20 opponent. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at The Grid Iron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our video. And also make sure to check out everything down in the description below. Sign up for our expert picks, our spread pick, on this game and countless others for Week 14 can be found on our website, thegridironexpert.com, as well as our weekly newsletter, our Patreon account, and exclusive content over there, and the Bet Now promo code. All of that stuff that will benefit you, the diehard college football fan, can all be found right down there in the description. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert. Oh,